Welcome to Doc the Volks. This is Bob Mann. This is a series of videos to help you better understand and uh, work on your Volkswagen TDI and other Volkswagens. I hope you enjoy it and the information was helpful. Welcome to Doc the Volks. The little layer here. This is Bob Mann, a trusted TDI technician. Here we have a 2003 Volkswagen TDI. Ah, let's see what we got there. Yeah, 2003. Uh, complaint, no power, possibly no turbo power. I get a lot of these, so I figured I'd run it kind of through you guys so it, to see what the quick and, uh, diagnostic of it. I use a uh, VADCOM, which, uh, let me see if we can get a little closer to it, uh, from Rostec. Fabulous tool. I mean, you can't do Volkswagen diagnostic without this or the factory tool, and I think this in some ways is a lot better. We're going to go into engine. And there it is, all our data on it. We're going to go to faults. And I don't know if we can get you in there close enough to see it because it's kind of okay. There we go. Okay. Charger pressure control negative diversion P155. I need my glasses here, six, I think. So, very common, but it can be quite, quite a few different things. So, there's a the turbo, there's the um, wastegate which is serviceable you get back over here there are these control valves up here one is for the EGR and one is for the turbo wastegate and then there's a check valve that provides vacuum I've been burned many a time it's underneath there it comes off the vacuum pump this canister this line uh, can really get you screwed up so I'm going to show you one of the first things I've done and uh, we're a little ahead of ourselves there on that. So I'm going to get the car up in the air and I'm going to show you a couple little tests. Hello everybody. Uh, this I'm Bob Mann, Dr. Volks up here in Pembroke, Mass. Or uh, you can check me at my site drvolks.com or cngvw.com where I convert cars to uh, run natural gas and some of my other inventions. Right now we're going to test, uh, we have a code for a turbo diverter pressure and the first step to doing it is most of the problems are the wastegate diaphragm that closes and opens it at the vacuum actuated diaphragm. Uh, they are serviceable. Dealers tell you that they're not serviceable because you're going to buy a whole turbo with everything at, you know, whatever, a thousand bucks. Um, that's a lie. They are serviceable. First operation is to get a good vacuum pump. This has been used quite a bit, and you have to pull the hose off the diaphragm, and you got to do a couple checks first. That's how I start. I pull off the hose that's up there that goes up to the uh, control valve, and I pull on it, and it's got to hold vacuum. If it doesn't hold vacuum, the diaphragm is junk. The other thing I'm looking for is to see that the arm moves up and down on the turbo. Sometimes, which is about 90% of the time, the rod inside the diaphragm rusts in, it's like it's a little sleeve and it's on the bottom the water comes in and locks it up. So if you don't see the arm move, the next thing you're gonna do, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's supposed to move, is the service component. I get a lot of my parts from idparts.com up here in Duxbury. Peter and Corey and the team are great. So when I pull the vacuum, this has to come down. The other thing is it has to stay down. If it slowly leaks up, it could be leaking inside because water accumulates and just rusts inside it. So that is uh, part of the operation that has to happen. Like I said, this is a, a serviceable component. So what you undo is you undo the nuts that are up above. I'd like to show you, but it's kind of hot up here uh, to get the camera in for you. And uh, obviously I'm bored and help doing it. Now what you undo it, you undo it and then you slide it up and down. So if the turbo moves freely, all you have to do is service this. That's one of the operations that has to be done. So you've determined that this is frozen and it's bad and has to be replaced. But you need to go a couple more steps further to confirm 
that the rest of the operating system for the wastegate is functional and I'll show you that from the top side it's pretty simple uh, it can be very time consuming for a novice but uh, if you follow the simple steps you'll be able to kind of get right through it and can do some of this stuff yourself or you can bring it to me and I'll take care of it at a modest sum oh yeah I like how these guys send it to you they send you the little clip that nobody sends to you that holds this on and when you do put it back in you want to lubricate the shaft with anti seize and up top side um, with a sleet the rod goes through the turbo you want to spray some uh, like a molly type stuff and that'll keep it from getting a little gummed up in there at this point I've disconnected the hose and brought it up to the top side and hooked up the vacuum gauge uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the car up and what you should see is vacuum automatically open up and close the wastegate that's how it's designed so when there's no vacuum the wastegate is left open so that you can control power so you have no power uh, so when this thing starts up it should determine that it has proper vacuum and a lot of vacuum and we'll get into that a little later there's a bill there's a process of having vacuum and then having enough vacuum to operate the devices As you can see in these pictures, this is what the EGR's valves look before and after I clean them. After they're cleaned, they're tested to make sure that the diaphragms work correctly, and then they're put on. Um, this is a dirty, messy job. Uh, most places just replace the EGR valve. I clean them at 300 bucks a pop. It uh, gets costly. Here's an intake on a Jetta that you can see that almost down to nothing. The one on the Beetle was even worse than this. It took quite a lot of cleaning. And this star was like a black tar goo and a just real messy job. But you can see the difference from trying to breathe through a two and a quarter inch diameter two hole down to less than a half an inch. Uh, it, it kills your performance, your mileage, uh, it's hard starting. That car, after I did this service, uh, started up instantly. So that was one of its problems. It was just sucking, trying to get enough air in there to uh, fire off. And then I readjust the EGR for this.